Hey guys, what's happening? So, I got a project right here, and it's actually going to be a domain controller slash roaming profiles server. So, this is a Dell R730 server. Um, actually, I've never messed with one of these servers. I've messed with a lot of 710s and 720s, but never a 730. And I think a 740 is the latest version. So, yeah, I got to install Windows. Uh, 2022 server. Um, here's the license right here. It's a standard license, 2022-16 core. Um, so I don't know exactly what's in here. I'll find it out. Obviously, dual processor. Um, okay, so I don't know what the RAM. Is. I guess I'll find. I forgot what the RAM is. I'm guessing. I think I told them no less than 32 gig of RAM. So um, yeah, there's not going to be any virtual machines. It's just going to be a domain controller. And uh, roaming profile storage. So a uh, roaming profile is, they don't, it was really big about 20 years ago. Um, whereas it, what, what would happen is whenever you log into a computer, it would sync up your desktop and your My Documents. So if you logged into to a different machine on a domain, uh, it would actually like copy over your desktop and your documents. Um, there was a lot of issues with it with syncing, you know. That's kind of like where they phased it out. So if you ever looked that up, roaming profiles, uh, all the documentation you kind of see is probably from like 15, 20 years ago. You know, Windows 2003, 2008 was kind of like when they started phasing it out. So, but this originally was from like a upgraded, you know, from an old small business server, like 2003, long, long time ago. So, um, all right, so what do we got in here? So, solid state drives. So I'm going to do a mirrored boot drive, Hewlett Packard, 480. Um, see, that's pretty cool. They actually have the little adapters right there. See that right there? The, it's like a 3.5 inch to 2.5 inch uh, SSD ad adapter. So they make these servers in a couple different ways. They put they have the 3.5 inch drives, but then they also have the 2.5 inch drives. So that's weird. They, well, it's cool they came up with an adapter at least. All right, so I'm going to have the mirrored. I want to make sure the drives are identical. So yes, 3 and 3. I just want to make sure they're all the same. Because typically when you when you I mean when you mirror drive, um, you typically want it to be the same same uh, manufacturer, same size. Because when you have a failure, okay, so I, I got to rearrange these in, in the right order. Yeah, so you got three. So you got three that are the same. Okay, so I'd make this obviously the RAID RAID one for the boot drive, Windows drive. And the storage drive would be over here. I guess maybe he wants a hot spare. I don't know. I'll figure it out, though. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to come up with a solution. I'll come back. But pretty cool server. These things are nice, though. I mean, you have, like, the redundant fans. Um, yeah, it built a lot of phone systems, different kind of servers, email servers, spam servers, um, predictive dialers. Um, on the R720s and 710s. I mean, they basically look exactly the same. It's just a newer version of the same server. So, um, you know, this is more like the kind of like mid-level server. You have redundant power supplies. It's bigger, a little bit bigger. Four NICs. So this is obviously a good machine for virtualization. So actually, my other, a lot of the other servers I have are running VMware and Hyper-V. Um, so you get the half-height PCI expansion cores over here. Then you have your DRAC remote access controller. I don't know if it actually has an enterprise version yet, uh, but usually there would be add-on cards somewhere in here. And then uh, RAID controller. Hopefully, it actually has a hardware-based RAID controller. So you can actually there's two different kinds of RAID controllers. You have software-based and hardware-based. And you want hardware-based. Hardware-based is a lot, a lot faster. Hardware-based basically is it has its own processor, its own memory. We typically will have some kind of battery module around here somewhere to back up the cache. Um, I'm guessing this is it because it looks like this is feeding back to the to the SATA backplane here. So yeah, what's funny is my, I know my channel is kind of is very random, and but it's more like a tech channel. And what's funny here is that all my best videos, or like the, the lowest tech videos I make, are my best videos on YouTube. 
Like when I do these higher tech videos, like I get no views on them. Um, okay, so Windows Server 2022. That's kind of interesting, these 8-pin um, Molex connectors on the back here. So I wonder if that is if you need to actually have like a PCI expansion card with uh, more, it needs more power, it has like a, like a video card, you know, you could actually run extra wires to the video card and it would actually be pulling power from this this, this back plane here. Um, as you can see, it's not your, like your typical PCI Express back, back plane here. Well, it is in the front. I mean, it looks like a PCI uh, 8X. Um, these are 16, it's all 16 slots. Yeah, I guess what I'm guessing is you can get like an ex uh, like a like a like a little wiring harness that comes off and gives you extra power for the bus. So I noticed the DB2, so I'm guessing that means database too. So maybe it was like a redundant database server, backup database. Yeah, any sort of like when you do like a large scale installation, like a, like a larger office, and you're running like SQL Server or Oracle database or Oracle or it could be MySQL, it could be a lot of different things. You'd actually lots of times you would have want to have a hot spare or a real time failover. It really depends on the size of the organization, but uh, all right, so I'm gonna get this thing fired up. Well, it's fired up. BIOS is like one of those crazy BIOS is like with the life cycle controller. Lots of times I disable the life cycle controller because it creates a lot of stress when it takes an extra two or three minutes for the thing to boot up. Um, and at the same, especially when you do it remotely, you reboot a server remotely. It's like, man, the last thing you're distressed because you don't know if it's going to come back up or not. And then you have to wait an extra two or three minutes because of the life cycle, life, life cycle controller. All right, so here's the BIOS. I'm going to go in and check RAID, see what the settings are. Um, all right. So, memory settings, 32 gig, alright, make sure we're on embed disk, at least we're using RAID. Alright, so I'm going to go back in the RAID controller and set up the RAID arrays. Alright, so this particular disk, I said I have three of the smaller drives and then three of the bigger drives. So, I'm going to do RAID 1 with a hot spare and then RAID 1 with a hot spare. So the store drive will have a hot spare and the boot drive will have a hot spare. So hopefully it will always be in a redundant configuration. Now this server is pretty loud. So I wonder if there's a way I can do power management to lower the fans down. Um, yeah, it feels like a, it's in full blast, full 100% mode. Even though I don't have any warnings on the front here. So sometimes if you open a case app or something detects like some kind of warning, uh, it will go into full fan. But so I have two RAID arrays created, the boot, OS drive, and the data drive. Uh, so now I gotta go back and uh, apply hot spares. So there's two different kinds of hot spares you can do. You can do a global hot spare. And a global hot spare will actually, regardless of what array it is, it will actually apply to whatever array you have. But uh, for me, since I actually I already have a hot spare for the, each array, I'm gonna assign as a dedicated hot, hot spare here. This is a painfully slow BIOS. God, I would hate to have trouble on this thing. Um, just, it, it, you know, when you're, you're stressing because your server's down or whatever, and you're waiting, every time you have to reboot the server, it takes minutes just to deal with all the, the BIOS headache. All right, so finally got to Windows installation. So, master boot record. Uh, I'm not using the UEFI. That was the default while was on here. All right. So, yeah, it took me forever just to get to this point. Just because the BIOS takes so long to reboot, man. It's, it's crazy. Tell me to fix that, man. All right, standard edition, evaluation, desktop experience. Um, desktop experience means that it's going to actually install the, the, the GUI, the graphical environment. All right, custom. All right, small one. That's going to be the boot. All right. All right, so now that I have Windows installed, I'm going to go back and do the BIOS update, RAID controller firmware, network card firmware, life cycle controller firmware, uh, and also the BCM, the fan controller firmware. I think it's probably going to take about an hour just to do all the firmware updates on the devices here. Right, the RAID arrays are currently building, you can see. Hot spare, hot spare, RAID 1, RAID 1. All right, so server is done. 
ready to install in the customer environment. It's not overheating, 62 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so let me show you how I turned on the fans. You can obviously hear it's a lot quieter now. So you first have to program, it kind of sucks, you can't just do it right in the BIOS. You have to actually first program your DRAC card, then log into the DRAC for remote access card. Uh, and then you got to log into uh, fans or hardware, then fans. And then you need to go into setup and you hit minimum power performance, fan speed low here. Um, but this this will automatically adjust. I, I don't know why it was such a, a high. Well, I guess let me demonstrate real fast. Yeah. Sounds like a jet plane. I'm just curious to see how the temperature is going to go down. I don't know. But, okay, so. Yeah, this is going to be in a, a cooled uh, server room. So I don't need to actually have. I mean, even just, so it was like half, 50% before, it was so loud. So it doesn't need that. It only needs to be running high when it's overheating, so. But, uh, alright guys, cool, that's how I built the server. But, uh, yeah, I do this all day long. <laughs> I do.